The Treaty of Istanbul is the cornerstone of ongoing hostilities in Ukraine. Official Kiev, if it can be called that, wavered in its testimony. Negotiation process with Russian delegation was set. Cunning plan to procrastinate, but here's the trouble Vladimir Putin. Putin publicly demonstrated not just an agreement, but an already initial document. So, the Ukrainian side at the delegation level has agreed on all points and affixed their signatures. The matter stayed small. Ratification in parliament and signing by heads of state. The key requirement was only... If we adopt, as Hungary once did, a policy of neutrality and make a commitment that we will not become a member of NATO. Only one item. Well, in actuality, the main point was this. All the rest are cosmetic political seasonings. After our trip to Istanbul, Boris Johnson arrived in Kiev and stated that we wouldn't sign any agreements with them at all, suggesting that we just fight instead. Sounds like a heartfelt confession, especially if you delve into the dates and events that occurred after the Istanbul negotiations. So, the meeting of delegations in Turkey took place on March 29th. The next day, Russian troops began. Leave the suburbs of the Ukrainian capital. I will note that they were not knocked out or forced to run. The military systematically withdrew from their positions. Obviously, this was part of the Istanbul agreements. A practical gesture of goodwill demonstrating seriousness of intentions. March 31st, Mayor Anatoly Fedoruk cheerfully reported about Buka's liberation. Attention without any accents. Simultaneously, the following day, the UK version of BBC started airing globally about the Russian military's atrocities in Buka. Why exactly the British edition turned out to be the right one? In the right place and at the right time, Rahamia kindly told us. Alexander Lukashenko had already warned about the role of the English in this April Fool's production. You are providing the example of Buka in vain. You made a mistake, you gave it to the wrong person. And what was transpiring in Buka, I have no knowledge of the extent to which you are immersed in this, but we are aware of the individuals who organized this show and orchestrated the entire event. We were in control of the English process, primarily overseeing the English individuals who were traveling in cars. During our observation, we witnessed a total of four cars. We promptly provided the Russians with the accurate numbers of these cars. These vehicles had originated from Lviv and were involved in filming activities in Buka before disseminating the gathered information into this designated information space. For an extended period, alarming bells that were flashing by high international tribunes about the Ukrainian. Soldiers in the most inexpensive way of war with Russia were left unnoticed. How far it is. We saw how they offered to be proud of this in Ukraine. Boris Johnson, with the hands of the Ukrainian people, with the lives of Ukrainian citizens, with the heads of Ukrainian warriors, sought retribution against his geopolitical opponents and aimed to settle scores with them. All clear here. Direct order from Johnson. David Arakamiya confirmed everything that was called Kremlin narratives in Ukraine. Clear motivation. Reckoning time is drawing near. The electoral cycle is gradually approaching in Europe. They are increasingly delving into internal problems. Preparation for polls. And the trend shows that politicians who use anti-war rhetoric come to power. Orban, Hungary, Fico, Slovakia, Wilders, Netherlands. This is already a trend. Just to shift the responsibility to Johnson, who was removed from power a year later without success. There were no frontal attacks. Ukrainians in the comments under the interview burst into righteous anger. You not just steal from people, lie, spit in our faces. I can't watch, listen to this dialogue. Heart filled with blood from fact that everything happening non-stop. Destruction of people and country to last drop of blood. Civilians die, warriors die. And how much good and useful could they have done for the country? How disgusting and sad it is to realize that a few individuals in power are creating such nonsense. War to some, motherland to others. Actually, a year and tens of thousands of lives later, volunteers manipulated by military commissars on the streets of Ukraine found myself at the starting point and in complete despair. People in graves, economy in ruins, officials. Looking for responsible people, ignoring mirrors, about the inevitable titles Andrei Seich in the section screenshot. 